Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and this is a bit of a retrospective review on one of my favourite kits, the Southwold Max M3000B. Now, I believe that there are a number of different configurations of this kit, and this is the one uh, that I have here. And unfortunately, this is not made anymore. But the thing I love about this kit, so <laughs> it's, it's gonna be a little biased because I, I genuinely like this, and no, Southord is not a sponsor of this video. What I like about this kit is I love these, I believe it's ABS plastic handles. They were nice and extra long. This was a particularly uh, long handled lock pick, which is somewhat different to a number of the other brands which are out there. So these are end-to-end -end almost 14 centimeters long, which is for those of you who prefer inches, a, oh, just under five and a half inches. So, uh, you know, this, these are nice and lengthy and I found these to be very comfortable. Now these aren't full tang, they're quite light because of that, um, but I never found the feedback was robbed because of, of this kind of uh, lack of full tang. The Tang itself only goes in, I think, to around the M on these picks. And I did hear some reports of people um, fatiguing the plastic at some point, and uh, if you do break them, they do break about there. But I've been using these for uh, around six years. I, I've, I've had some Southold Max picks, which still remain in my everyday kit, and I've never, ever had a problem with them breaking. What's really good about these, they're 23 thousandths of an inch. They've got super slim shanks, a range of nice profiles, bar a couple, we'll come on to those. And Max Yield 301 Stainless, which is really tough. And it does give, I believe, maybe, maybe it's just me, but I believe it does give that little extra bit of feedback because you, um, it reduces the flex in the shank. And I also find it very durable. So yeah, let's have a look at this kit. Let's see what it offers. You might be able to find some new old stock or a secondhand uh, kit, which is in good nick, if you do a bit of a search uh, or know people in the community that might be able to uh, sell or trade one of these kits. But yeah, this is just one of my all time favorite sets and um, I just wanted to share it with you really. So what do you get? Well, let's have a look at the hooks first. Here are the three hooks I have in this kit and you can see that I have them in order of height you have uh, the what I think is called the 07B. I remember that because it's one of my favorite short hook profiles. It's just just right, you know, when you get a, a hook which is just right, it's almost a perfect short hook for small keyways in my opinion. A very nice medium hook and a much, much deeper hook there. There aren't any deforest picks in this set, so this is the hook you'd go to if you wanted to uh, reach up higher into that keyway. We have three rakes in this kit, a snake rake, a classic city rake or L rake, and a triple peak rake. You might notice it's got extra material here. This is because this is designed for zipping locks. This is a kinetic rake, but you can use it as a smaller uh, spaced, so a smaller wavelength, if you like, triple peak rake. What's noticeably absent in this set, of course, is there is no Bogota style triple peak or double peak or any other star Bogota picks in this set, unlike something like the uh, C2010 that Southall do as well, another great kit, but not in Max Yield Steel. We have a glut of different ball rakes, which makes me think that this set was more designed for the locksmith rather than the hobbyist lock picker. So single ball, double ball, or snowman, the um, half double ball or half snowman, and then some hybrid version, which seems to be a half diamond followed by a half ball. Um, these are pretty good for your wafer locks. Uh, I've never personally found that I needed a ball rake over something like a half diamond or a snake rake, but I know that these are incredibly popular with locksmiths, so who am I to say? Then we have the large and the small half diamond. The small half diamond is the only profile in this set that I, I really don't get on with. It's not really defined enough. You can actually file these down a little bit either side to make a uh, a better half diamond profile, but as they are, I tend to use this as a probe pick to pick the tubular locks. 
um, rather than use it as a half diamond. The large half diamond is a perfectly good large half diamond. I do, however, wish there was something in between these two heights that was a uh, about that big to make a, a really nice small half diamond um, for raking and hybrid picking those smaller keyways. There are two other picks and there's a lot of manufacturers that do this. Um, I'm neither for them or against them. They're quite handy to have as a spare backup pick. So you can throw in a wallet or another case as uh, just a, a set of lock picks. So one, uh, these are obviously thicker shanked as well. But these are double ended picks. Um, we have a snake rake and a flat topped hook here. It's quite deep, it's quite medium hook with a thick shank. So you're not going to be using this in high security locks. If I compare that to how thin the shank is on the standard snake rake, you can see that it's at least at least 50% bigger, I would say. Maybe a little less, but nevertheless, it's you know, you see it's quite chunky. And then we have uh I don't really know what this is, some kind of hybrid pick slash kinetic rake, so it's almost like a little half diamond on one side and a kinetic rake on the other side. Um, and a much better half diamond profile than on the handled pick, let me just show you. Um, because it actually has some depth to it. Again, not really my choice of double-ended pick, um, but you know, it can be useful in a pinch. What I don't like about these handleless ones, they tend to rotate slightly as you're picking because you don't have much um, shank to grip hold of, I guess. In terms of turning tools or tension tools, um, quite a nice range actually. I've used Southord turning tools uh, for many years. I still have some in my kit. I'm, I, I really like these. They're just your standard wiper blade style uh, turners, but yeah, they're, they're pretty nice. What they don't do is very much in terms of their thickness in this in this direction, uh, which some more up-to-date kits from other manufacturers do, but these are very nice nonetheless. So you have four kind of straight uh, picks, which are two, um, I guess, standard L-shaped turners, one thinned down slightly, which I, I do like. Then we have two Z-wrench star ones, again, just different profiles on either side. So that's, if you like, six different straight profiles. Then we have twisted profiles. And I'll come on to these ones as, as it's like a pair. This provides a little bit more flex when you're tensioning, not bad when you're raking or using a pick gun, but otherwise I prefer the straighter edge ones for the extra torque I can apply. Then we have these, which um, I think that these are designed to go and tension those locks in the uh, recessed door handles. They're called tulip star handles. So this will go into the lock and just reach over the edge to allow you to tension while you pick the uh, key and knob cylinder on the inside, so you have a flexible one, which would be very good with a, a an EPG or another pick gun and a standard one if you want to do some hand picking. And last but not least, a uh, cabinet lock, wafer lock style uh, double ended pick. So you put that into the keyway and turn it and be able to just tension it. I've actually modified these to uh, pick things like smiley dimple locks and uh, van locks, the the ones with the flush. Um, it's like a tubular lock, but the pins are all flush. Uh, yeah, so yeah. It's, whilst I don't particularly like this as a, a turning tool for wave locks, I don't find I need a double sided one. Uh, I have found this very very useful in other applications. Last but not least, we have the case, which is all leather, and I quite like it. Um, the, the leather is quite nice. It feels good quality, it's a fine grain to it. It's got enough space for all your tools. Um, and the best thing about this, of course, is it's all the way around so that if you have any tools in there or some shims or anything else really, it's not going to slide out and go everywhere. I do like fully zipped leather cases and it kind of feels nice as well. Since we have a whole bunch of lock picks, I don't know, let's go pick a few locks. Let's start out with this lovely little Yale padlock with a very small keyway, which is why I chose it actually. And in terms of bottom of the keyway turner, this thinned Southord turner is such a nice one. 
it just hangs in the bottom of the keyway and it doesn't tend to slip into the keyway to block it um, either, which is, I think, quite nice. So just gonna go in, that's pin three, uh, two there, four, just hit one, let's go in, hit one again, and we are open. So just fly through that lock because you have plenty of room left with a thin down turner and a short hook, uh, even in a small keyway like this. We have a couple of kinetic style profiles like this. So I've got a lock here, which I think I can zip open using a twisted turner to give me a little bit more flex. We're just gonna give this a go, a couple of strikes. Might take a couple of goes, but yeah, we got it actually, there we go. City Rake is great on very low security locks, like this little master lock three. So let's give this a, <laughs> I mean, it just falls apart, doesn't it? I hardly ever used the large half diamond. And that's probably unfair on the profile. Um, this is uh, just a standard Euro cylinder. See how I'm just raking some of these pins. Uh, if I, they feel like they're going to bind, I can always push up on them like it's a pick. Uh, like pin one there and we're open. So that's that's real hybrid picking there One big shortcoming of this set is it doesn't have a top of the keyway turning tool You could always bend over the ends of uh, one of the L wrenches uh, Obviously if this is under warranty, I wouldn't recommend doing that But you know there are ways to modify these to give you a shorter end um, To protect the bottom of the keyway. I'm going to just pop this in here and See what I can do in terms of picking this lock with the medium hook this time. Uh, that's four, uh, five, back to three, uh, two into a bit of a false set. Pin one now, okay, good. Uh, oh, I've got pin three binding there. Anybody else at the back? Yeah, four now. Four, going back through. And, Another pin there, don't know which one that is. It's lots of spools in this one. It's a lovely, lovely lock to pick, I have to say. Um, ah, yes, that's pin three and we are open. And finally, I feel I really should show off how this tool's supposed to work. Got a wafer lock here. You just pop this in like that. Uh, it's a little hard to, to keep in place, but we'll try to use it. And we're going to use a uh, ball rake as well and to see if we can't gently encourage this lock to open. Oh, we got it, thankfully. Yeah, you can see how these kind of talk out. I prefer shortening the prongs, but again, gotta be careful if your kit's in warranty, if you're going to modify tools. So there you go, a retrospective review of one of my favorite all-time sets, the South Old Max uh, series picks. Clearly, this is a bit old school. It doesn't have some of the more modern profiles that you'd expect to have uh, in a, a more modern lockpick set. For example, you know, a triple peak rake uh, and probably less ball rakes. But this is very much a locksmith oriented set, I would say. Um, but despite some of its shortcomings, I, I, it's hard for me to really say anything bad about it. I, I've always loved the... Uh, the profiles, the shank heights, the comfort of the handles, the strength of the steel. It's just always been something that I've really liked. Um, others would disagree. It might not be to your taste, but I'd really like to know what you think of this old school South Old Max set in the comments. Did you like the old ABS handles? Did you like the 23 thousandths of an inch uh, Max Yield stainless uh, tips? Just let me know. I do read all the comments and reply to as many as I can. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you haven't subscribed, now's a great time to do so to see more content like this. And of course, I'll see you all next time.